Congress is on recess, but the war room knows that the need for gun reform never takes a break. In the 168 days since the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School, at least 4,448 Americans have died as a result of gun violence. That's a rough estimate from Slate Magazine, and it means 171 new towns since Newtown. It's amazing. Something needs to be done. Both sides in the gun debate are using both the carrot and the stick to mobilize supporters. We wish it was just a carrot and a stick. In Colorado, an effort is underway to recall Democrat State Senator John Morse for his votes on gun safety. The Colorado Springs Gazette reports that the two groups spearheading the recall are offering gift cards, a 9 millimeter pistol and ammunition to the volunteers who gathered the most signatures. Wow. Remember when Republicans hated recalls when they said, oh, it's un-American to recall. But now look what happens. The conservatives are trying to get recalls. Even worse, though, the New York Times reports that the FBI is investigating rice and lace letters sent to New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and his mayors against a legal guns group. On the good side of the battle, the group Moms Demand Action is pushing customers away from business with, friend, with gun businesses with gun-friendly policies. It launched its Moms Demand Corporate Responsibility campaign to single out companies like Starbucks for allowing guns in its cafes and Walmart for selling guns itself. But it also thinks, thanks companies such as Pete's Coffee and Ikea for keeping guns out of their stores and away from children and serving great Swedish meatballs. With me now is Shannon Watts, founder of Moms Demand action for gun sense in America. She joins us from Seattle, where she's helping get an initiative on the ballot to expand background checks in that state. Uh, welcome back inside the war room. Thank you so much. So, Shannon, when you were on the show in March, your focus was on lawmakers. Why move to the corporate responsibility efforts now? Well, make no mistake, we're still pressuring lawmakers, Congress and state legislatures. But when the Senate voted against background checks in April, they locked the door. So we decided we would go in through the window, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the culture in this country. That's the mom's job. We're caretakers. And what we realized after Sandy Hook was that there are a lot of lax laws and policies in this country. That includes the policies of American businesses. And I didn't realize before Sandy Hook that when I was getting my latte at Starbucks, I may be standing next to someone with a loaded weapon. I certainly don't want to spend my money there. And moms make 80% of the spending decisions in this country. So we're telling moms, go to Pete's Coffee and Tea, uh, where they don't allow guns in their stores, despite the laws in the local state. So, so, Shannon, hearing this, I want to talk about the moms a little bit as well, but how important is it then to change the culture of guns in America and not just the laws? I mean, I see that, that you're focused in both directions. You know, one impacts the other. So if the laws change, the culture changes, and if the culture changes, the laws will change. So we're going to attack this on both fronts. We're going to go after American businesses and pressure them to have gun sense, and we're going to thank those companies that already do. And we're also going to continue to pressure our Congress and our state legislators. Yeah, which is important. And by the way, you know, you go to Pete's, they have small, medium, and large. You don't even know, need to know another language uh, to order your coffee there. So that's one good feature. Uh, yeah, you know, Shannon, your organization was established less than six months ago. You already have over 100,000 members. Why is the mobilization of mothers in particular a key to getting common sense gun legislation passed? You know, we keep hearing this over and over again, that moms have been the missing voice in this for so many years. We had a great Million Mom March. Um, about a decade ago, and then uh, we needed another group of moms to come along and, and pick up that torch and to say, okay, after Sandy Hook and finding out that, you know, eight children are shot and killed every day in this country, um, we're busy every day with our children, but we can't afford not to be activists. We are all accidental activists, and we have to keep up this work. It's an important voice. We are the caretakers in most part for this country and for our country's children. Yeah. And it we have a, a moral obligation. And it's a demographic that I think everybody responds to when they hear from mothers. So I think that there's something important about that. Let's talk about some of the public opinion. A public policy polling survey out today actually shows that voters in dark red states support expanding background checks. In Georgia, 71 percent. In Tennessee, 67 percent. And Arkansas, 60 percent. These same voters are also unhappy with their senators who voted against background checks. Can these numbers change the conversation you're having with lawmakers on Capitol Hill finally? 
Absolutely. These numbers are changing the conversation on a daily basis. What these numbers show is that this is a nonpartisan issue, that you don't have to be a Democrat and you don't have to be a Republican to believe that we don't have enough gun laws in this country and that our, our, our gun violence has become an epidemic of public health crisis proportions. It doesn't matter if you live in a red state or a blue state or in the south or in the north. This is an issue that all Americans agree needs to be fixed and solved. And if legislators don't listen to these polling numbers and this data, then we will have new legislators very soon who will. Yeah, but you know, they didn't last time. And, and that's why we, these numbers keep coming out, Shannon. So the legislators that you met with, that you went on to Capitol Hill with, that, that your group and people like your group or groups like your group, lobby all the time, they said the same thing. They showed numbers that I, I think it was 90 some odd percent wanted background checks. I hadn't seen 90 percent of America want anything, uh, you know, in, in such unison. How, do, how does it change when you hear it from places in the South or these very red states? Yeah. Here's what it changes. It changes that, you know, the so-called Connecticut effect, which is this idea from NRA lobbyists that this is a one and done. Sandy Hook happens and people forget and move on. And what these numbers show is that not only are uh, people not moving on, even people who would be considered to be on the side of the NRA are not moving on. They know that we need change and they're going to make that change and, and they're going to put pressure on their legislators. And so, you know, you talk about that movement going after legislators. Now it's a grass, you know, you're running a grassroots movement, groups like yours, Moms Rising, uh, you know, they have websites, they don't work for you. Do you think that these groups can create a powerful, powerful foe to the NRA and, of course, the face of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre? Absolutely. We already are. What we're finding with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America is that we can motivate moms online at MomsDemandAction.org and then get them to act offline. And, and you're seeing that today as an example. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz is in New York City for fundraising and our moms are Twitter bombing him and then our moms are actually on the ground protesting his presence in New York City and asking him why he voted against background checks and uh, against our children. And so social media is really motivating moms to get out there and to be activists and it's happening every day. There, the bell cannot be unrung. This movement is moving forward and we are winning. And mom knows best. So thank you, Shannon Watts, founder of Moms Demand Action. Keep up the fight. Keep up the good work. Coming up here, two filmmakers went after Charles and David Koch. And much like the comic book villains that they have modeled their lives after, they didn't like it too much. The makers of Citizen Koch join us with their story right after this.